We're taking a quick break. We just got to the hotel. Right now we're charging up the RX Zero Mark II. So far I gotta say it's a lot of fun. It's very easy to throw in your pocket. It's a lot more tiny than the RX 100 is. So this is a lot nicer to carry and travel with, especially when I was on the plane, walking through the airport, even walking around the hotel here for some of that B-roll because it's just so tiny. It's discreet, people don't even notice you're filming. It's super easy to throw in your pocket. It's about the size of a pair of headphones when it's all folded up. One thing to be aware of is battery life. I was shooting in 1080p 120 for those last scenes because I wanted to slow them down, have more editing capabilities uh, for B-roll. We're gonna switch to 4K when we go out and vlog now, so you'll get examples of that video as well. But I just want you to be aware the battery life does drain on here. Now, from what I saw, it was a lot better than the GoPro. I definitely was able to record a lot longer on this without seeing the battery drain quite nearly as much. That being said, definitely get yourself some spare batteries. I ordered two more. They're on back order right now, but they're on the way. I would recommend having at minimum one backup, probably two backups, and maybe the USB charger, just so you can always have this thing ready to go. Right now, let's head out. We're gonna go get some food. I'm starving, so we'll explore Arizona a bit here. Let's now swap out cameras from our A7R 3 which we're recording on, and switch back to the RX Zero Mark II. All right, so we're about to head out, but before we do, one thing I wanna do is throw on a lav mic here. So right now you're hearing the audio off camera, but one of the great benefits of the RX Zero here is obviously that it's got external audio inputs. So we're gonna use the Sennheiser lav mic, throw it on here, walk around with that, instead of using the built-in microphones. Let's switch to that now. All right, so now we're hooked up to the lav mic here. Beautiful resort, I gotta say. So take a look out here. We got a pretty nice fountain. Uh, what we're going to do now is go to Firehouse Subs, I think, get some food, unless I find something that looks a little bit better. But you guys will get a good sense of dynamic range as well. How's the focus going to work? We know it's a single focus, but with F4, I don't think there's too much critical focus where we really have to be worried about it. I do want to note for these scenes, I'm doing this handheld, so I'm just holding the camera. They do have the little $50 attachment. It's $100 if you buy it without the camera. For my style, I like throwing these things in my pocket. The whole reason I bought this is because it's so tiny anyway. Um, so I'm really not planning on using that much, but just note for these scenes, the stabilization you're seeing is simply handheld. Uh, let's see how it does with, you know, a lot of the brightness changing right now. We've got a good Arizona heat, nice sun coming out of this. By the road as well, so I got, uh, side note here, a little cheap wind muff for my Sennheiser lav mic, and I'm really curious, I'm hoping it's gonna help out. This was the mic I had all the issues with on the gain levels. So right now I'm set to level one because I don't want to clip. Really hope I'm not clipping. Doesn't look like I am, uh, but we'll see when we edit it in post. One other thing worth noting here is the screen brightness. It's not the brightest. Uh, you can see it if you squint a little bit, if you put your hand over it, but in direct sunlight, it's pretty hard to see the screen on here. So be aware of that. You can crank up the brightness. I'm using the general levels it has right now. But if you do that, you're gonna crush the battery as well. The screen by default is set to shut off. When you're recording, it looks like it's probably about 30 seconds when it shuts off. So just things to be aware of. If you like the flip out screen, it's gonna be good, but it's also gonna help kill the battery if you're doing this vlogging style setup. All right, so we're back to the onboard audio. For those of you curious what color grading could look like on this, we are using uh, Picture Profile 6 right now. So earlier B-roll footage, I just used the color straight out of camera. We didn't have any Picture Profile applied. So what we did here is just slapped on Picture Profile 6 so you guys can see what it looks like when you color grade when you're shooting in a log format out of this camera. really good sub. If you've never had a firehouse meatball sub, definitely try it out. It's way better than Subway. They melt it open-faced, as you can see with the cheese on it. They also have this sweet and spicy variant, which has some crushed red pepper, as well as it's almost like barbecue sauce in there with the marinara. Really good. All right, so for whatever reason, I'm having trouble with the audio levels on this. It sounds like it might be even in these scenes. All right, so quick pit stop back at the hotel. I wanted to make sure my audio levels are good, or obviously this whole vlog could have been shot. What I found is actually pretty interesting. So I think most of it was actually the speaker on the camera itself. Doesn't sound that good, so you may sound like you're clipping even when you're not. That in combination with wind noise, uh, wind noise is really bad on the onboard mic on here. You're definitely gonna wanna cover it. That's what a lot of the crunching I heard was as well. So I think we can go back to the lab mic. The only thing worth noting is I've got to, with the Sennheiser lab mic, keep it at level one and I've probably gotta mount it 
kind of on the middle of my chest here. When I had it up towards the top, it definitely clipped. Not terrible, but I do talk loudly, so I wanna make sure those scenes aren't gonna clip. So I'm gonna go back to the lab mic. We'll wear it a little bit lower. It has a lot better wind protection. One other thing worth noting from that footage is you saw in the last two scenes there, the focus is really hard to make sure from the flip out screen that it's caught exactly what you're looking for because it's single focus and not continuous autofocus. So with vlogging, that can become a big issue because you're gonna hit record, assume it's in focus, go throughout an entire scene, which you can't really create because vlogging by nature is gonna be real life and you may have missed the whole shot. The whole thing might have been a little bit out of focus and there's a notable difference you can see in the quality, whether it hit that critical focus or whether you were kind of out of focus or maybe moved your arm forward or back. So two things to be aware of. One, definitely really hard to tell from the onboard audio if it's good, if it's the right level or not. So definitely something to make sure you have set up ahead of time. And number two is only having single AF is really gonna kill a lot of vlogging videos. Um, it's, it's just something to be aware of that you're gonna miss shots, you're gonna miss scenes. So with that, let's have some fun. We're gonna go back out and go for a run here, go exploring. So we'll get some more examples and I'll see you out there. All right, so I woke up a little bit, uh, got some work done. We're headed out right now for a run, as I mentioned. I actually didn't bring the lab mic, so I decided against it because I didn't wanna run with it. Um, but what we're gonna do is go for a run here. We'll get some more footage. I did turn on wind noise reduction, so we're gonna see how that actually works on the mic itself, see how it compares to the footage earlier. We're gonna come back then, we'll do about a three mile walk later where I'll actually hook up the lab mic. So with that, let's go for a run. So what we're gonna do now is a quick stabilization test. We're gonna hand hold this while I run with it for a little bit. So first what we're gonna do is just show you out of camera, and then we're actually gonna run it through Sony's Imaging Edge software, which helps stabilize it as well. All right, so we just got cleaned up after the run. I'm about to head to work, so we're about a three mile walk from there. Let's get some footage on the way there and we'll talk about what we think about the high frame rate on here, as well as the overall user experience I've seen so far on the way. Let's dive in. All right, so we got the lav mic hooked up now. Um, I figured out the levels, basically set this to one. It's not gonna do so well if you have it near your mouth, as we've seen with Sennheiser and Sony combinations. But if you talk kind of at a normal level and have it off maybe, what is that, about a foot, foot and a half from your mouth, um, and you don't talk too loudly, it seems to be good audio levels at that point. Right now it's really windy, so I'm curious, how do you guys think this audio compares to what we were doing earlier, which was with the kind of built-in mics? In case you didn't think it was that windy, just take a look over there. Some of the areas where I wish they did a little bit better were specifically around maybe the interface, which is a little clunky. They have a good button layout, so it makes sense. It's essentially the same menu settings you're gonna have on any of their alpha lineup, if you're familiar with those. Whether it's the APS-C or full body sensors, they're all the same. It does have intervalometer built inside of it. Um, it doesn't have SNQ, but it has high frame rate. Let's take a look at some of the high frame rate examples. What I found on this in both the RX100 are that once you get over 240, it gets really blurred out and the image just doesn't look that good. It's gonna downsample the resolution. You're gonna get artifacts. So really HFR is meant to be used in 240 in my opinion, if you're concerned with quality. One of the biggest downsides is obviously not having continuous autofocus. And I don't know why they felt the need to leave this out, whether it was a size, price point, you know, what the negotiation was that made them say this, uh, but that's a big omission. And I think for a lot of people, that's what's gonna kill it here. Because any type of action sports, you really need continuous autofocus because you're gonna be changing scene, bouncing around. Maybe you wanna flip the camera around and talk to it for a second, then look back at your scenery. I've been doing that here and I'm actually cutting those scenes out because I realized later on they were out of focus. As well, if you start the scene by looking at the landscape, then flip to yourself, your face is out of focus, it's gonna be blurry. So not having continuous autofocus really sucks on this thing. Um, but it is something you can work around, you just have to be aware of it. So it's kind of this balance and trade-off, and I wish Sony would just go all in for some point and, and decide, look, we're gonna put continuous autofocus, built-in stabilization on top of electronics, so optical, a uh, little bit better audio quality maybe built in. That's really all this needs. This needs one or two things, continuous autofocus, 
and that makes it just an amazing camera. If you get even half as close to the GoPro type stabilization on this, as well you add in something like continuous autofocus, this thing's gonna sell like crazy, I feel like, especially to the action cam market. Right now with it sitting in between kind of this pocketable mid-tier camera, um, you know, one inch sensor, it is a pretty nice sensor in there, but not having the best stabilization and not having continuous autofocus, I really think Sony's gonna still have a tough time selling this Mark II. They made a lot of good improvements over the Mark I, but it seems like general feedback is people still aren't as impressed or completely sold on the idea because of these big omissions Sony decided to make. All right, so just wrapped up work. Uh, good time to check out the low light performance. So want to note right now, I'm using ISO auto, which is set by default to 125 on the low end up to 6400. Um, I don't like to go above ISO 6400 on Sony cameras. That's kind of my sweet spot where I find that the footage becomes unusable above that. Specifically on this camera, that's almost near its max anyway. So I think that's about how high we want to go. So we're at 6400 max right now. Another thing I just found on this, and we're using it right now, is called preset focus. So I haven't seen this before. Maybe I just haven't used it. But what it does is really seems to have two modes for focus a 0.5 to 1 meter focus, which is called near focus, and then off. So it's either on or off from what I can tell. Originally, I thought preset focus would be something like set your focal distance, and then every time you press record button, it's just gonna keep you at that focal distance. That makes a lot of sense to me. Um, instead, what they're doing, it seems like you just have this toggle either focus on everything, which again, it's fixed at four, so they must just be focusing in the distance, which means anything close here is not gonna be in focus, or you set it to near focus, which means anything, you know, kind of 0.5 to one meters is gonna be in focus. All right, so the sun has officially set now. Just wanted to give you another kind of low light performance. I turned off preset focus now. So honestly, another thing I wanted to point out on this is just because the screen is so tiny on it, it's really hard to tell if you hit critical focus, if you're in focus. That goes whether you're actually recording or even when you're playing back. That last scene here where I was using preset focus, I was kind of curious whether I was actually in focus or not. Um, but when I watched it and viewed it, there's really no good way for me to tell. So just be aware, it's amazing they included the flip out screen, even a screen in general on an action camera, but it is not the biggest, it's not the sharpest. Um, so it's nice it's there, but don't expect the fact that you can really use it for more than kind of just figuring out your general framing and looking at your photos and videos. It's worth noting right now, you're noticing the slowness in the scenes. Uh, we're shooting camera recommended, mind you, at 115th. So I'm doing 30p at 115th. So every frame here is actually going to be spread over two. Why do I always end up in the most remote places when I'm walking on foot at night? So thanks for joining me through the vlog today. I know it was a little bit longer than my usual uploads, but I wanted to give you a lot of examples filming on this guy. I gotta say, it's really interesting because you start off with this filming perspective of a new device as you're using it. What's it like? That's really what you see in the initial video here as I'm recording. And then you have me now, which is after I've edited the footage, taken a look at all of it. And honestly, I don't think there's a lot of use cases for this camera now outside of really a stills photography camera. So it's ruggedized, it's got a one inch sensor, it's really good to have in your pocket, it's convenient, but without continuous autofocus, uh, with the onboard mics on here not being that great, the screen itself not being able to tell if you've really nailed focus or not, there's a lot of reasons why I think there's better cameras out there to vlog with, including honestly the GoPro. Um, and it's at a much lower price point. So all in all, I gotta say I'm a little disappointed now that I've really used this and seen what it's like to take out vlogging. 
I do think there's use cases for this. I think some people will find that they're drawn to it. Maybe you don't already have a GoPro or an RX100, so you're looking for something kind of in between, but it is rather niche market. So all in all, I gotta say, I don't think this is something I would recommend for vlogging. It does work, you've seen the footage, but it's not the best. So that's it guys, that wraps up my vlogging test with the RX Zero Mark II. Let me know any questions in the comments below. As always, it's a pleasure having you guys. If you haven't subscribed already, definitely consider it, and I'll see you next time.